that in today's case increase, almost 60% of these individuals are in the 20 to 49 year old range. Straight ahead on what's new, a huge spike in COVID-19 cases. In fact, this is our biggest day-to-day -day jump since the pandemic began. We'll tell you where in Ohio the hotspots are and what it means for you. The Hall of Fame game has been nixed. We go one on one with its CEO and president about how they're pushing ahead to next year. Sadly, we have another closure to tell you about at the West Side Market. Pinzoni's is closing its doors. We'll tell you why and where you can still get its food. It's here, an all electric pickup truck being made right here in Northeast Ohio. Vice President Mike Pence visits the Lordstown plant to mark its unveiling. We get a first look. And keeping kids busy, it can be a difficult task these days, but we've got some new ideas that can help you keep them entertained. What's new starts now. And now, live from WKYC Studios, this is What's New. Happy Friday Eve, everybody. It is <laughs> Thursday, and uh, we want to thank you, of course, for joining us here on What's New. We have had a huge day today as far as the news goes. Jay yeah. Crawford joining me here in studio once again. And Jay, I mean, the COVID numbers are definitely the top story today. Yeah, they are. And you know the drill by now. The news is not good. Good afternoon at home, everyone. Thanks so much for watching What's New. We're going to jump right into those new coronavirus numbers. And once again, the spike in new positive cases continues to rise. The state announcing today 892 new positive tests in the most recent 24 hour reporting period. That's an increase of 40% from the number reported just yesterday. It is also more than double our 21 day average. In fact, this is now the fourth highest single day since the pandemic began. Our other spikes were back in April and those three days were very high because of the outbreak in our prisons. The governor saying essentially that makes today's number the highest we have seen yet. Now one other thing that's getting eyeballs on it is the fact that today's numbers are in a different age range than what you might be thinking. But keep in mind the governor has already addressed this. Who is out and about? Well, those who are ages 20 to 49, and that's where 60% of the cases are now showing up. The age of the coronavirus patients in Ohio has dropped monthly, and Governor DeWine is saying no analyst he's talked to believes this has anything to do with more testing. Ohio is seeing an increase in the infection rate, but there is something that we can all do about it. And the way we control that is wear a mask out in public. If you don't worry about yourself, worry about your grandparents, worry about someone else, because what we really are concerned about is if you're out there and you get it and then you come back and then you go see your grandmother or you see somebody or you somewhere even in a store that you're close to and they happen to be older or they happen to have a medical problem, that's a huge, huge problem. The governor says the state will do its part as well, and that means more testing as well as tracing. He's encouraging people to get tested, especially if you live in an area that is seeing a spike in cases. Now, to try to give these numbers some context, I did reach out to the governor's office today. There is one very important question that we haven't been able to get an answer to, and that is what percentage our testing has increased. It, it, basically, until we know the answer to that, the daily cases numbers that we're giving out don't have complete and proper context. I did reach out to the governor's office. That was this afternoon trying to get that number. They have yet to reply, but we're going to continue to try to track that down because that is very important. Mm -hmm. 17 states now require masks in public. The governor may take a county by county approach here in Ohio and some counties may see a mask requirement coming up, Betsy, in the future. Okay, so the question would be, of course, does any of what we have just told you about, does it change your feelings about wearing a mask? We want you to weigh in at WKYC.com slash vote now. We've got a lot of folks uh, now who are starting to chime in on this. Does the number surge that's been happening recently, does it make you more likely to wear a mask? We're going to check and uh, see how the numbers are faring a little bit later on. But, you know, Monica Robbins joins us now, our senior health correspondent. Monica, I, I say it over and over again, but here comes another I told you so moment uh, where it was Memorial Day. Now we're starting to see the numbers spike. It's kind of all adding up and certainly that just raises flags all over the place. 
Yeah, you're exactly right. And last week, Betsy, we told you that uh, Amy Edwards at University Hospitals told us that contact tracers are now finding that those who wore masks around infected people did not get the virus. And now a Texas A&M professor and his team of researchers found if you don't wear one, your chance of actually getting the virus increases dramatically. And the, the team examined trends from China, Italy, and New York City, and they found that using a face mask reduced the number of infections by more than 78,000 in Italy and from, from April 6th to May 9th, and by over 66,000 in New York City from April 17th to May 9th. So, you know, maybe it is time to start thinking of that mask as a seatbelt, wear it to protect yourself as well as, as, well as others. Well, you know, the governor said today, you know, think about your grandmother, think about the people that you live with. Don't just think about your family, though. Every person you come in contact with, this is like a spider web effect. It goes out. So if you infect one person, it goes out from there. Now, Monica, the CDC said today that for every case reported, there are 10 more infections. That's that spider web effect. Why is that? And who are those likely 10 other infections? Estimate bouts comes from looking at blood samples across the country for the presence of virus antibodies. So that means a lot of asymptomatic people were out there spreading virus without realizing it likely. And also it may explain why our ages are declining. The spike is happening to younger populations who typically aren't at high risk for complications. So if they're not having symptoms and not practicing those safety guidelines, they're likely spreading it to everybody else and they don't even know it. So, yeah. you know, we're being asked to be good citizens and the very least we can do is just wear a mask when you're around large groups of people and just follow those safety guidelines. We can get through this if we do simple things. Absolutely, that's a great messaging. Thank you, Monica. We'll check in again with you, I'm sure, in the coming days. Well, let's check in now on our question of the day. We asked you if you're more likely now to wear a mask because of the surge in cases. And so far, an overwhelming yes. And thank you for that. The masks do make a difference, and you're going to be making a difference as long as you wear yours. Jay? Betsy, now on to your feet of five, but we start there with hugely disappointing news from Canton, the Hall of Fame game scheduled for later this summer will not happen. Officials at the Pro Football Hall of Fame announcing today that the game, the enshrinement ceremony, and all the events associated with this huge weekend will be postponed until 2021. We bring in Jimmy Donovan, 3 News Sports Director, to tell us about this. Jimmy, I know you talked with Hall of Fame CEO and President David Baker today. What did he have to say about today's really disappointing news? Well, he was very disappointed, and it's a very disappointing day for the city of Canton because it brings them into the spotlight as you kick off the football season, and it's just a nice slice of Americana to see how that city revolves around that event through the weeks. And then there's the story. It brings a lot of money into Canton, too, because there's tons of tourists that flock to see the game and the enshrinement ceremonies. None of that is going to happen. Everything is going to be pushed until next summer in 2021. So we'll begin with the game. First of all, it was to be the Steelers taking on the Dallas Cowboys. When the game was announced, it sold out in 22 minutes. Well, here's what they're going to do. They're going to bring the Steelers and Cowboys back next summer on August 5th, and they will play the Hall of Fame game again, try it again, in 2021. Now we move to the enshrinement ceremony, which was going to be huge this year because you had the regular inducted class, and then there was the centennial class that was going to be added to that. All of those inductions will be held next summer, too, on the dates of the actual Hall of Fame festivities will be August 5th through 9th of 2021. So it was a tough decision to make, but David Baker told me a couple of hours ago he feels it was the right decision. We wouldn't do anything unless it was safe uh, for the people that we care about, our enshrinees that we're trying to honor, our Hall of Famers, some of who are in an older demographic yet as it is and may be more vulnerable. So we thought this was the best thing uh, for our community as well. But what it means, I think, for Northeast Ohio is that next year, you know, we'll have the draft in Cleveland, uh, which will be huge for all of Northeast Ohio. And, and then we'll have two enshrinements really in one extended weekend, Jim. He went on to say basically they're going to use this theme line. They can double the fun 
in 21, and you certainly can. Now, if you had tickets to the game and you're wondering about a refund policy, you can go to the Hall of Fame website for that. But basically, if you want your money back, they're going to give you a ticket refund. If you want to hold on to your tickets, they will be applicable to the game coming up next year. And again, it will be the Steelers and Cowboys. Jay, think about this, though, okay? You're going to have the Centennial class and the class from this year coming up next year. And then you're going to have next year's class, too. Let me throw out a couple of names to you <laughs> that probably I'm going to go out on a limb here, all right, and say these guys are probably going to go in. Peyton Manning is up to be voted into the Hall of Fame coming up for 2021. Charles Woodson, an Ohio guy, could go into the Hall of Fame. He's eligible. Calvin Johnson, the great receiver of the Detroit Lions, he could go up and go in for induction into the Hall of Fame, too. So it could be an amazing football happening coming up next summer. But this is a tough day today. Yeah, it is. Peyton is a lock. The other two very likely to go in. <laughs> you might just say triple the fun in 21. That, that is going to be <laughs> a super fun weekend. Jim Donovan, thank you very much. We'll see you at 6. Okay, thanks, Jay. Well, the news now heads a little farther east toward Youngstown, where Vice President Mike Pence rolled up in a brand new electric truck in Lordstown. Mark Namick was there as the vice president helped to unveil the new vehicle while talking about Ohio's economic comeback from the coronavirus. This facility and its hometown has been a touchstone for decades for the automotive industry and politicians. A perfect backdrop in a battleground state representing the American worker, the ups and downs of the economy, and ingenuity. Some of that on display today as Lordstown Motors, a company that bought the shuttered GM plant, showed off a new product, an electric truck, and did so with the help of Vice President Mike Pence. You know, it really is an honor to be here to be able to drive up and help unveil what will soon be the first fully electric pickup truck on the market in the United States of America. Ladies and gentlemen, I give you the Lordstown Endurance. This is just a great day. It's an exciting day. From a time uh, not too long ago where we had heartbreaking news, today is a new beginning for Lord's Town, and it's a new day of leadership in electric vehicles in the United States. Trucks are not expected to roll out of this plant until next summer. And at the moment, the plant employs about 170 people. That's a long way from the 4,500 people that worked here in 2016. Reporting from Lord's Town, Mark Namick, 3 News. Certainly is some exciting news. And now it's time to check in with Russ Mitchell for more of today's top headlines. Hi, Russ. Hey, Betsy. Good afternoon. Good afternoon, everyone. Today would have been Tamir Rice's 18th birthday. He was shot and killed by a Cleveland police officer outside the Cadell Rec Center back in 2014 when he was 12. Tamir was holding a pellet gun. And after multiple investigations, a grand jury ruled the shooting was justified. Funeral services for Nakia Crawford were held today at the Word Church Akron. The 18-year-old was shot and killed while waiting at a chat traffic light earlier this month. She recently graduated from North High School and was planning to attend college this fall. The family of a toddler who died while in foster care is demanding answers. The parents of Mendisa Sizemore say they were not notified of her death by either the foster mother or Cuyahoga County Children's Services. They allege the 22-month-old was left alone and choked to death. And more than a million dead Americans got COVID stimulus checks from the federal government. Treasury officials said to meet the mandate to get those payments out quickly, they did not look at death records. The government will now contact family members of the deceased to get those checks back. By the way, those payments totaled more than $1.4 billion. One of those funny but not really funny stories, Betsy. Yeah. Oi. Yeah. All right. We'll check in again with the news folks coming up in just a little bit. Thanks, Russ. See ya. All right, we're going to be honest. Saharan desert dust doesn't typically make the headlines here, but a huge dust plume from northern Africa has now made its way to the United States, and it may push as far north as Ohio. These are pictures from Cuba, where it darkened skies as it moved over there. Matt Wins joins us now. Matt, you told us a little bit about this on Monday, and I got to tell you, it piqued my curiosity. I, I think it's, it's fascinating. Please tell us more. 
Jay, you're absolutely right. I think it's it's just fascinating to track this stuff. I mean, it happens all the time. We always have Saharan dust rolling across the Atlantic Ocean, but this happens to be, as Betsy mentioned, one of the bigger plumes that we've had over the last couple of years. So let's get into it now. I've got some graphics that, that will help explain this a little bit. So over on the west coast of Africa, obviously desert, there's lots of sand. They get giant thunderstorms out there with wind that push this sand up into the sky. And a lot of the thunderstorm updrafts will do that as well. So that pushes it up to around 20 30,000 feet in the atmosphere where it then gets trapped. So they're formed there. The trade winds across the Atlantic that also help to stir those tropical storms and hurricanes our direction, they carry that uh, dust up in the air uh, as it goes thousands of miles across the Atlantic. Big question I had though, why doesn't it just sink? Well, the reason why it doesn't sink is because much like Lake Erie produces a dome of cooler air, cooler air being heavier, it tends to sink. It's got a very heavy property to it. Same thing with the Atlantic Ocean. You get this dome of cool air near the water, and what happens is that dust in that warmer air above it gets trapped. It can't sink because that cool air is taking up that space, so it literally gets lodged at 20 to 30,000 feet. It doesn't go away. It gets carried away until really it hits land. And the southeastern United States, you can see where that plume is now across the Gulf of Mexico. They're the ones going to be affected by this. The colorful sunsets we mentioned earlier this week, it has a stabilizing effect to the atmosphere, but sensitive groups uh, do have some problems. Those uh, they have asthma problems or COPD. We've got uh, some issues there. So where does it go from here? Well, it stays in the southeast. We may get a little bit in our sky here, but we're really not going to be able to tell because we've got showers and thunderstorms in the forecast this weekend. So I'll detail our local forecast. No dust for us, but we'll take that <laughs> forecast through almost your 4th of July holiday coming up, Jay. All right. Very good. Fascinating stuff indeed. Matt, thank you. <laughs> Well, we're a month away from getting Major League Baseball back, but it will look much different than what we all remember. I'm going to break down all of the changes that you will see in Major League Baseball coming up. And Cedar Point is preparing to open, <laughs> but not everything will be available for visitors. We'll have everything you need to know before heading to the park in Clicking in Cleveland.
Welcome back to What's New. Major League Baseball returns in less than a month. July 23rd is the big day, and there will be a ton of changes. All 30 teams will play 60 games in 66 days. The Indians will play each divisional opponent 10 times. The other 20 games will be against the NL Central, the Cubs, Reds, Cardinals, Pirates, and the Brewers. Play is going to look different. Both leagues will use the DH. Extra innings will begin with a runner on second base. I can't wait to see how that works out. <laughs> the postseason format will remain the same. Betsy, that reminds me of Little League. Uh -huh. The trade deadline is now July 30 or August 31st, rather. So that will be big to watch to see what the Indians do with uh, Frankie Lindor. And this one is really big. No spitting, no tobacco use or sunflower seeds. No player-to-player -player contact other than making tags. That means no high fives, no handshakes, no nothing. There will be twice daily temperature checks, multiple weekly coronavirus tests for all players and team personnel. It's going to look a lot different, Bets. It really is. I think it's going to be interesting. I'm sure Terry Francota got those new rules, and he's sitting there going, <laughs> <laughs> What's really fascinating is the players or the coaches and the managers in the dugout have to wear masks. Yeah. Players can sit in the stands if they want. Right. That, that picture, I can't wait to see that. I, I, it's just, it's going to be so quiet in there, but aren't they going to try and pipe in noise? That's been talked about. Yeah. I don't think it's been decided. I know what Korea baseball is doing. They're putting stuffed animals in the stands oh, behind home plate to make it look like it's not an empty stadium. <laughs> it's kind of funny when you see it. Actually. Terrifying. It's, it's like those cool. people that put the mannequins in the restaurant. Do you remember? <laughs> oh, do. that was just the weirdest looking thing A, ever. a bit creepy. Oh, totally. All right, well, let's get a check on the forecast, too, because, of course, it is summertime, Matt, and I know everybody's talking about the rain and the thunder that we've had. We've had some cool weather lately, but it's not sticking around very long. Yeah. It's not, Betsy. We've got that humidity that will be building back in here. Boy, what a refreshing two days, though. The last two mornings we had our windows open and it was just almost fall-like outside. Uh, definitely that crystal clear air that you rarely get this time of year. Uh, but today is kind of a transition day. I think tomorrow you're really going to notice that transition back to more summertime temperatures. And transitions coming to price this time of year. We did have some showers and thunderstorms across the area today. Nothing severe with this, but some pretty good rumblers heading from west to east rather quickly, mainly down to the south of 76. You can see where those storms were heading through Akron, Canton earlier today. Still had some left over. Pretty decent downpour happening just south of New Philadelphia. Dover, you're clear right now. This is heading towards Mill, the extreme southeastern portion of our viewing area. And still some dark clouds bubbling up near Brunswick, a downpour there. A couple of raindrops hitting your windshield near Akron. That extends out towards Portage County, also Wayne County, seeing some isolated downpours. All this going to wind down tonight. We've been mentoring this area of low pressure off towards the north that continues to spiral around and we get these little spokes of energy. This is the last spoke of energy that we're going to deal with. And then all eyes turn off towards the west. We have heat building across the plains and we're going to uptick those temperatures starting tomorrow. You're going to start to feel it. The humidity will follow Friday night on into Saturday. So tonight, not quite as cool. We'll be back, I think, upper 50s in those inland locations. The rest of us sitting in the low 60s. Notice how those skies remain partly to mostly clear. Any rainfall chances will exit our forecast here over the next couple hours. Hours. Your national design by an hour by hour forecast clears us out nicely overnight. Tomorrow, I think we get lots of sunshine across northeast Ohio. Temperatures, though, will be warmer. I've got mid 80s in the forecast for much of the area. And then look what happens tomorrow night. Now, don't say, hey, we're going to have huge storms Friday night here. This is going to be a cluster of showers and thunderstorms that will develop off toward north along a cold front. The timing on these always change with the models. But keep in mind, starting Friday night and going through Saturday, we may have a couple rounds of strong storms around here, potentially. Universal Windows Direct 7-day forecast, 86 tomorrow, cooler with rainfall chances on Saturday, and then we turn to sunshine and dry conditions with temperatures making their way back up towards 90 degrees by next week. All right, very good. Matt, thank you very much. Next on What's New, Cedar Point is making changes to keep people safe at the amusement park this summer. We're going to tell you what won't be available to visitors. And why Indians player Emmanuel Clase? Classe. Classe. Close. Ah, Classe. <laughs> Very fancy. No wonder we picked him. He's <laughs> Classe. Well, he's not going to be playing this season, unfortunately. We'll have the details on that next in Clicking in Cleveland.
It just turned 525 here in the CLE, so that means it's time to see what's clicking here in Cleveland with our digital anchor, Stephanie Haney. And Stephanie, uh, I have to tell you, I know you're going to have more information on it, but Class A might not exactly be Class A. We'll have, you know, this story. It's a little blasé, the news we have for you about Class A today. Well yes, played, well played, People brava, brava. <laughs> Thank you. People have been wondering what's been happening with his suspension, though, now that we've got that shortened MLB season. So now we know. So he was supposed to be out for 80 games with the regular season. That's what we were expecting. But after te that was after testing positive for a performance-enhancing substance. But the league has cut that down to 60 games, which is all the games this year. Now, Class A is a talented pitcher, and while it will hurt to have him out for a full season, plus any potential playoff games, fans online are generally relieved that his suspension won't carry over into the 2021 season, whatever that ends up looking like. Now today, we also know more about what it's gonna look like for Cedar Point to get people back into the park. They released their new hours today for how they'll be operating this season, and they are a bit shorter. The park will be open from 11 a.m. to 8 p.m. each day. That is from Thursday, July 9th, all the way through Monday, September 7th. So we've got just about two months of access to America's Rockin' Roller Coast. Now, season ticket holders can get in on the 9th, and Cedar Point Resort guests can get in starting July 11th. Now, as a reminder, you will have to make a reservation online, get a health screening beforehand, have your temperature checked once you get there to make sure you don't have a fever, and wear a mask in the park. Here's what Cedar Point's Tony Clark said, though, in a blog. We will not have the water park open this year because of the shortened summer season. But there is good news. There will still be a 4th of July fireworks display, so you can enjoy that from the parking lot, Betsy. You can buy a ticket for 20 bucks to get in there and watch that from a safe physical distance. Interesting. I wonder if they're going to let people uh, bring in coolers and stuff while you're sitting there in the parking lot. Might be kind of nice, actually. How that sounds that? lovely. That would be a good thing to find out. All right, Stephanie, we'll check back in with you in just a little bit. A popular brand and longtime vendor at the West Side Market is packing up and closing up shop. Who is leaving and why? And it's been a little challenging to keep kids busy during COVID-19. Oh, yes, it has. But we have some fun and educational ways to keep them entertained and hopefully happy. And the Dixie Chicks are changing their name to be more culturally appropriate. We'll have details coming up.
And now, live from WKYC Studios, this is What's New. Oh, welcome back, everybody. On a beautiful Thursday, oh, we do have a few little pop-up showers that are still ongoing out there. Matt Wins is going to give us an update on the forecast coming up in just a little bit. But Jay Crawford, Betsy Kling, here in studio together. Virtual high five. Yes, we've done that yeah. every day this week. I like yes. that. It is. It's it's kind of fun to, to have him back in here. You can probably tell it's a little <laughs> bit more energy. It's nice to have somebody to talk to. Uh, anywho, uh, it's now time for one of our favorite parts of the day. Time when we get to tell everybody something good. And Jay, this one's actually special to you. Betsy, it really is. Bets, imagine being married for 65 years. My mother's first cousin, his name is Jim Torby, has been married to his lovely bride, Lucy, for 65 years today. Betsy, they purchased their home in Parma way back in 1958. They still live in the same home today. No way. Jim is a huge sports fan. He played semi-pro baseball, just a terrific athlete as a young man. And a big part of his life's work has included coaching countless youth football teams and girls softball teams to many championship seasons. There they are, Jim and Lucy, the mayor of Parma, Tim DeGeter, stopped by presenting them with a proclamation today. I want to say congrats to Jim and Lucy on 65 wonderful years of wedded bliss. Two of the more terrific people I know. Jim and Lucy, love you both. Congratulations. 65 years, Betsy. That's a long time. Believe it or not, that's older than me. <laughs> I do believe it. Okay, careful. I, careful. I do. All right, very good. Congratulations, though, to Definitely. Jim and Lucy. Definitely. All right, well, let's keep on moving because, you know, a staple at the Cleveland Westside Market for decades is going to be moving out. Pinzoni's Market Fresh Meats will close effective July 4th and operate solely out of their Parma location. Rachel Polanski joins me now to tell us more about this. And Rachel, Tony Pinzoni is such a, an icon here in Cleveland practically, and especially over there at the West Side Market. This had to be a very tough decision for them. Oh, that's right, Betsy. You know, Pinzoni's Meats has become synonymous with the West Side Market, and there's good reason for that. He opened his shop there almost 45 years ago. And he tells me he's worked at the West Side Market even longer than that. You have to see some of these photos that he showed me. So why then is he closing? Well, Tony opened a second location, a brick and mortar shop in Parma. And as he's gotten older, running the two businesses has gotten a lot tougher. He tells me that the coronavirus pandemic didn't help either. A lot of the guys closed for like a one month, two month period. I was one of them. I thought it was best because it was like initially it was a big, that was a lot to process, the coronavirus. We just decided this would be a good, good time to do it. Yesterday, Tony made the decision to officially close his meat stand at the West Side Market for good to focus solely on his Parma shop. Um, as 3 News previously reported, there has been ongoing debate, uh, battles between vendors in the city of Cleveland about the future of the West Side Market. Tony wanted to make it clear that his decision to close has nothing to do with the city, Betsy. Well, the West Side Market is still open. So what's the latest that customers need to know amidst this coronavirus pandemic? Yeah, that's a great question. They are open every day except for Tuesday and Thursday. They're encouraging folks to wear masks and to shop alone to encourage social distancing, Betsy. All right, Rachel, thank you very much. We'll see you coming up in just a little bit. Jay? 
Well, speaking of Cleveland icons, uh, one of them just rolled into the studio. Right. Wow, so Russ Mitchell is, back with more headlines. Is Leon Bibb behind me or something yeah. like that? Is that what's going on here? Hey, he qualifies, but you do as well. Oh, well, you're so <laughs> generous. I checks in the mail. Thank you. <laughs> Here's what's happening. As you know, you guys reported last hour, we had a big spike in coronavirus cases in Ohio. Today, there were 892 new positive cases reported in the last 24 hours. That's a 40% increase from the day before and more than double the 21-day average. This is the fourth highest single-day total since the pandemic began. We'll give you some perspective on this tonight at 6 o'clock. Ohio unemployment claims dropped for the eighth straight week. Still more than 34,000 new claims for unemployment were filed last week. Nationally, the number fell as well. That was the 12th straight job drop. And the LeBron James media empire just got a $100 million boost. The cash from several investment companies allows James, along with friend and business partner Maverick Carter, to combine their media companies into one. It is called Spring Hill Company. The two say the new company's aim is to give a voice to black creators and consumers who have been ignored or underserved. That's really nice. A $100 million boost. It's not a bad deal, Jay. Not a bad deal at all. One day, Russ, uh, LeBron James will be bigger than Magic Johnson in the business yeah, world. Yeah, he will. We've seen the impact that Magic has had. Mm -hmm. And again, Magic feels very committed to helping out the black community. LeBron even more committed to that. I, I believe one day his impact on business will be bigger oh, yeah. than Magic's. And sure. LeBron has a long way to go, obviously. Yeah. Well, no question. Fantastic. He's, he's got very deep pockets. Russ, <laughs> thanks. We'll see you at 6 o'clock. See ya. All righty, there it is. That music means it's time to check in on the world of entertainment. News of celebrities taking stands on social justice and mental health. Here's Stephanie Haney with our Daily Pop Break. There's no shame in their game. Kelly Clarkson and Demi Lovato talked mental health this morning. Kelly, who deals with depression, praised Demi for speaking out. Knowing that somebody else is going through it makes you not feel alone and so depressed about it. So thank you for doing that. It's really hard. Then Demi turned it right back around. I wouldn't be the artist or even the person that I am with being so outspoken and vulnerable and fearless um, if I hadn't had you to look up to. We are very here for all of this. The Dixie Chicks are now just the chicks. The country trio dropped the Civil War era word Dixie, updating their Instagram account name today and saying they wanted to meet the moment, which, by the way, is what their new song March is all about. March, March to my own drum, March, March to my own drum. Hey, hey, I'm an army of one. Oh, I'm an army of one. Taking their own stand. I gotta be somewhere to draw a boy. Actors Kristen Bell and Jenny Slate just announced they won't be voicing biracial cartoon characters anymore. Kristen, who stars in Central Park, and Jenny, with the part in Big Mouth, both say the role should go to black actors who can better portray the characters. And David Beckham and Matthew Perry traded jokes on Instagram after Beckham posted a selfie in a Friends t-shirt from an iconic episode. Perry reposted it and wrote, this guy has really good taste, whoever that is. Beckham took it in stride, confirmed his son Cruz got him the shirt, and joked back, writing, Look at me! I'm Chandler! Could I be wearing any more clothes? <laughs> oh, those lunges. I think that is my favorite episode of Friends. So Matthew Perry was the last holdout from the Friends cast to join Instagram. Clearly, he is fitting in very well. Now we are all just thinking about that reunion special that's supposed to film in August. It is my personal hope that they at least talk about where they think their characters might be today, Jay and Betsy, because that is what I really want to know. What's up in their love lives and what's up with all those babies? Yeah, I would love to know. if I wish the writers would kind of carry all of the storylines out and just give us mythical points in life as to where they'd be. It'd be, it'd be fun just to look at that. We need some Friends fan fiction. That's what we need. Internet, get on that, please. <laughs> yeah, and they're, they're usually very good at that. <laughs> Steph, thank you very much. We'll see you tomorrow. All righty. And now coming up, school is getting, or school is out. Good gravy. And kids are really wanting to get together with their friends, but unfortunately that's still kind of not the safest thing to do right now. I'm sure you're looking for ideas to keep your kids occupied. Lena Lai has some really fun activities next. I've seen this. It's, it's you, cute. You're going to enjoy it. I promise. Matt, how's the weather? Hi, Jay. We're starting to heat things up across Northeast Ohio. We've also had a few storms around the area today. We'll detail where those are now, and we'll take that forecast all the way through your 4th of July holiday coming up.
Welcome back to what's new. We'll revisit our question of the day. We asked you at the top of the show if you are more likely to wear a mask in public because of the surge in coronavirus cases and most of you are saying you certainly are more likely to do that. It's been holding steady since the time we asked the question Four out of five of you say yep, you're more likely to put that mask on Betsy. Well, this pandemic has been especially hard on kids. They miss their friends. School is out and frankly, they're just bored and mom and dad really don't want to entertain them anymore. Well, Lena Lai says that's the case with her daughters and she has some advice for all of us. Are the kids especially bored with nothing to do during the pandemic? Make big fun with the water blob. Fold over heavy gauge plastic sheeting and seal the edges well with duct tape. Add food coloring, seal in the end of a garden hose and fill with water. You can even wet the top with water and baby shampoo for slippery fun. Turn your kitchen into a science lab with a few household ingredients. Teach some science by making elephant toothpaste. You'll need an empty water bottle, regular hydrogen peroxide, dish soap, dry yeast, and food coloring. You see, over time, hydrogen peroxide breaks down into water and oxygen, but adding a catalyst like yeast speeds up the process. Pour three quarters of a cup of the hydrogen peroxide, some food coloring, and a good squirt of dish soap into the bottle. Mix up the yeast in a separate bowl, and when you pour it in, Whoa! the rush of oxygen, gas, and dish soap give you an explosion of foam. Like toothpaste for an elephant. Okay to touch, but don't eat it. Ooh, how about cooking up more fun for the kiddos? Use a dollar store vinyl shower curtain as a giant reusable canvas outside with washable paint that you can simply hose off or on rainy days inside with easy to wipe dry erase markers with the kids busy time for you to relax <laughs> isn't that slick i gotta tell you it really is when everybody gets back into the weather center i have fully planned to put a water blob somewhere here in the studio <laughs> because i just think it looks <laughs> way fun and we can all just kind of blob around on it and jump around and have fun with I it I'm in. Sounds like a great idea to me. <laughs> I know, and Matt, we know a thing or two about trying to keep kids busy during the pandemic, of course. And uh, how, how are you guys holding hey, up over there? We're hearing little pips and squeaks back there. <laughs> Oh, yeah, Hi. River just came downstairs. Come here, buddy. Um, Hi, I'll tell you, we do fun, you know, Lena's got all these little fun activities, all that good stuff, but we do things like vacuum the house, scrub Ooh. the side of the garage, <laughs> and get a, get a giant piece of paper that we're coloring for the probably 17th day in a row. So I'll tell you, you've got to keep busy somehow. But I, I really like Lena's ideas. I think those are pretty cool. <laughs> do you want to go get Mama? Go get Mama. Yep. Go, go tell her to come downstairs. And Matt, have you learned the okay, trick yet uh, that let's... the best way to get a young person to do something is tell them you're, go you're going to time them? No, Jay, I haven't. Uncle Jay, that is the best tip I've heard. <laughs> yeah, yeah. We're going to talk about that hey, off River, the River, go get Mama. I'm going to time you. Let's see how fast you can do it. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Uncle Jay's starting a timer right now. All right, great. Jay, thank you. Any more tips? Just oh, I got feel free bunch. to text me offline. That's fantastic. <laughs> <laughs> I'm sure you do. That's great. All right. Well, what's great also is that we're making way for a nice evening across Northeast Ohio. We still have some lingering chances of pop-up downpours. There's a little wave of energy moving through. Doesn't take much this time of year to kick off some tall cumulonimbus clouds and some downpours as a result. Uh, the heaviest rain that we've had is now south the New Philly. This is heading out of the viewing area. Carroll County, a little leftover rain. And you can see that pop now. Areas in northern Trumbull County heading towards Kinsman, Route 11. We've got some lightning with that as well. That's heading off towards the east, so Champion uh, over towards the Cortland community likely to get some rain. And a little bit of rain heading into Summit County as well. These will be few and far between as our area low pressure finally moves its way off towards the east. We turn our eyes towards the west. That's where the heat is building. And we'll eventually see that work in here tomorrow. So not quite as cool tonight, but still not bad. We'll be back into the 60s for many of us, upper 50s as you get inland. Skies will clear with the loss of that daytime heating. We'll lose our rainfall chances. But look at our June rainfall so far. That number at the bottom is what you want to pay attention to. Cleveland, Akron, Mansfield, all running slight deficits. It's not a drought by any means, but the newest drought monitor is released on Thursday. You can see much of Indiana and areas of the Ohio Valley starting to get on the dry side. So we could use the rain, and I think we're going to get it as we go on into your weekend. But beyond 
beyond that, it turns dry. So the rain this weekend, I know the timing is not great, but we could certainly use it. National Design Mart hour by hour forecast takes us through your Friday. It will be dry tomorrow, but as we go into tomorrow night and Saturday, we'll run the risk of some of these clusters of storms moving through. Some of them could be on the strong side and produce some heavier rainfall as well. And then a quick look ahead to your 4th of July holiday. All indications are we're going to have a nice ridge building in here with some heat. Universal Windows Direct, 7-day forecast, 86 tomorrow, cooler with the rain around on Saturday. Sunday looking dry at this point, and next week dry and turning hot. So hopefully we get rain this weekend, and then beyond that, it's going to be a water uh, your garden kind of thing. What's going on, Jay? I hear you laughing. 17, 18, <laughs> so, 19. Yeah, Matt, well, when oh, I went yeah. in, during your weather cast, I was saying, River, my, where are you? My dad always used to say, I bet you can't do whatever in 20 seconds. And I would say, oh, you want to bet? So I would run. And he wouldn't dumb. count until he heard my, my footsteps coming. And then he would say, 17, 18. And then, of course, you know, <laughs> I, I won. And that's how he got me to do the next task. Right. Matt, thank <laughs> you awesome, so much. Dude. We'll see you yes. again coming up tonight at 7. We're going to time you, too. <laughs> All right, Throwdown Thursday. <laughs> Gang, it's finally back. Jay and I face off for the uh -oh. leg lamp once again in a battle about summer. And Jay, I got to ask you, I, I'm wondering if you can uh, get me a glass of water in less than 20 seconds. Of course I can. All right. Yeah, time me. Okay. And our Worth the Watch is one that will really make you smile. These two cousins are inseparable, but they had been separated for a long time, of course, like many of us. See the reaction when they finally get to... Come face to face for the first time in months. <laughs> Look at her excitement. Well, we are finally breaking out the coveted 
Leg lamp for Throwdown Thursday once again. Jay, I have to say, I have missed seeing the leg lamp. I don't know where it was. Do you know where it went? It was on my desk mm -hmm. <laughs> because I won it last. It's yeah, been a while right. since we've done this. It is. So here's the deal. Betsy and I go head to head. Whoever wins gets to keep the leg lamp on their desk until the next competition. So exciting, Betsy. And we make such a silly big deal out of it. So uh, <laughs> we have to bring in our third party to kind of navigate these waters with us. And we bring in our Mythbuster Dr. Frank as Esper, I'll get it right, from Cleveland Clinic Children's Hospital, and he's going to be quizzing us on summer safety. So, Dr. Esper, we have our fact and fiction signs. We are ready. All right. Please give me easy questions. <laughs> yeah, that's right. Well, you, you already lost the point by missing, mispronouncing my name, right? So, <laughs> so I win one. the tiebreaker. <laughs> I win the tiebreaker then. <laughs> all right. Okay, we're all set, ready to go. So these, these are how to be safe, because there's going to be a lot of travel. Now that we're finally mm -hmm. getting out, we're getting out and about, it's time for us to uh, you know, enjoy the summer. If you're going to go on a road trip, the best way to go on a road trip is in your car. If you go on a road trip in your car, you are completely safe. Is that fact or is that fiction? Well, no, it's fiction, not completely safe. Well, see, there, we need clarification on the question there, Dr. S. <laughs> sure. <laughs> I get a lot get, of those questions. Do All we right, get out of the car? Are you com <laughs> well, no, you're going to have to get out of the car. If you go on a road trip, if you go on a road trip, you are completely safe if, you, if you're doing a road trip. Okay, I'll do this. Got to give an answer. I'm going to say fiction. Yeah, no, you can't be completely twice. safe. I'm back to fiction. Yeah. Yes, and, then, and that's true. The answer is nothing is completely safe, right? right. So if you're a, there's nothing in life that's ever completely safe. And the answer is that even if you go on a road trip, yes, while you're in your car, you are fine. But, you know, if you're getting out to get gas, if you're getting out to go to a rest stop, there you go. if you're getting out uh, to get uh, some sort of snacks, those things can lead to exposure. Now, that's still with good common sense, good hand hygiene, you're able to minimize that. It's certainly better if you're in a car with a small amount of people or just yourself. Uh, you're not seeing a lot of exposure as with other things where you're going through airports, you're going to train stations, bus right. stops, things like that. All right. So we, both, right. Get, we both get credit number, for that one. Number two, coronavirus still spreads in hot, sunny weather. Is that fact or fiction? That's one Coronavirus that's still fact. spreads. It's fact. Yep. I had my sign up first. Yeah, it's, <laughs> yeah, that's absolutely still fact. Places like uh, Florida, places like Arizona, they're still seeing an upsurge in mm -hmm. a lot of their uh, cases, and they're way, way hot uh, mm -hmm. in uh, late June, early July. It suppresses the ability to spread, but it can still spread. Number three, uh, we're going about to uh, have a lot of ba backyard barbecues, uh, mm -hmm. a lot of backyard uh, parties for 4th of July. So is it safe to go to a backyard barbecue? Is it, is it safe? Um, is it safe? Is it? Well, um, so the statement in, is, would be it is safe, and then that would be either fact oh, yeah. or fiction. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to say <laughs> right, fiction. Okay. The answer is no. There's yeah. Again, we just fiction. talked about nothing is ever completely safe. There are still people around. What can you do? Listen, we want to get outside. We want to have backyard uh, barbecue. Big rule of thumb for this summer is that if it's outdoors, it's a heck of a lot better than if it's indoors. If you're going to do that, though, Make sure it's not a, uh, a buffet. Try to spread people out. Think about the rain. If it's going to rain, you may want to reschedule because if it starts raining, people have to come inside, right? Yeah. So make sure that you uh, look ahead and think ahead. No buffet. All right. Okay, this is the tiebreaker. We've got less than a minute. Go. Does coronavirus spread through pool water, through chlorinated pool water? I'm going to say fiction on that one. I don't, I don't think it can. I think the chlorine would kill it. Betsy saying you, Betsy? fiction too. Oh yeah, I'm sorry. I'm. Yep. <laughs> she's just she's holding her fiction card up yes. as if you can see it. Yeah, there's yes. that whole thing. Yeah, so sorry. it. So there have been no reports of coronavirus being able to pass through pool water. However, pools bring a lot of people together. So if you are in a pool or around, you still want to make sure you try to keep your distance. If you're outside the pool, it's still good to wear a mask. Do not wear a mask while you're swimming. But if you're outside, if you're lounging about, you still want to uh, keep distance and you may want to put your mask on if you're not going to get into the water. All right, so, so it's a tie. So that means yeah. I get to keep the lamp. You get to keep the lamp. Very and good. Now we've All also right. learned that you can go on a road trip if you're careful. And yep. The only safe place is in the water. Yep. Yeah. Pool so water. that's my takeaway. Right. Everybody <laughs> just stay in the pool until this thing's gone. Right. Well, barbecue in the pool will do it all in <laughs> the pool. Right. Just stay in the water. All right. <laughs> Dr. Frank Esper from Cleveland Clinic Children's go. Hospital. Thank you so much for your help today. Our worth the watch is right after the break. Don't go anywhere. It's good.
Here it is, worth the watch, our cousin's reunion. After being separated from the by the coronavirus. <laughs> oh my god. Can you imagine? Like, oh friends. <laughs> As Josie said when she saw her friend after being separated for a while, civilization. <laughs> Is that what she said? Like, gosh, you know, because your family's not not anymore civilization. But yeah, that's oh, what everybody boy. feels when you finally get to see somebody after a long time. So cute. Yeah, very cute. We're out of time. We hope you join us again tomorrow at five. Definitely. Please do that. And what matters most with Russ and Laura starts right now.